Hi guys, it is April from Getting Who Go With It. Today I'm here to share some books, movies, TV shows that will help you get through this anxiety filled time. So let's get into it. <music> Before I begin, I want to just give a little shout out to Leanne from Literary Diversions. Um, I'm actually going to spend a whole week um, just loving on Leanne and kind of doing my own versions of some of her stuff. So I've got a tag that she's come out with that I'm going to be doing later. Um, this video, um, a kind of haul-ish kind of thing, uh, all inspired by Leanne. I adore adore her so so much. I think she might be my favorite booktuber. I just do. She's just a wonderful person. She posted something very recently about anxiety and these anxiety filled times and I could so relate to it. Um, so as you are all experiencing, the coronavirus is kind of everywhere. Well it's it's everywhere. I mean Tom Hanks has it along with his wife. The Prime Minister of Canada's wife, um, Sophie Chudo, has the coronavirus. It feels like it's everywhere and it's just a little bit overwhelming. I have been glued and when I say glued I mean it's the only thing on. I've been watching CNN and CBC I'm just flipping channels over and over and over again and it's becoming an obsession. I'm like trying to, today I'm going over to my parents house and I'm going to sit my mom down and like teach her how to order groceries where you just have to go and drive into a parking spot and they'll come and bring the groceries out to you because I'm just nervous. I don't want this to spread. All that to say my anxiety is like up here. There's only so much you can disinfect. Um until you need to kind of bring your own level of anxiety down. So, <clears throat> I am going to share with you, as Leanne did in her video, which of course will be linked below. Please go and watch that. Um, after you watch this, please, please go and watch it. Uh, it's so wonderful. Um, I'm going to be sharing with you my coping mechanisms, which are very similar to Leanne's. I have a couple more. And um, in her video, she talked exclusively about books. I'm going to share just one book and then a movie and a TV show because we're all, more well, many of us, are social distancing right now. So what are we going to do with all of this time? Lots of reading, but also lots of TV watching, if I'm, am I right? So the first coping mechanism is to or surround yourself with happy things, like buy yourself the tulips. Um, reach for books that make you happy, movies that make you happy. So I'm going to share some stuff with you and I would highly suggest Bridget Jones's Diary. If you want an escape, a happy little escape, Bridget is a very lovable character. She's in her 30s, um, single in the UK. Her family is hilarious. She's hilarious. And she's trying to find love and having a really hard time of it. It's funny and there's a bit of romance in here and it's just everything you would ever need in a happy-go-lucky book. So go and read this. Now for TV, I would highly recommend You've Got Mail. And guess who's in You've Got Mail? Tom Hanks. So we can give Tom Hanks a little bit of love. This was written and directed by Nora Ephron, who I named my daughter Nora after. She is a wonderful, wonderful human being. So You've Got Mail is about um, two people who chat to each other via email. They begin to have feelings for each other, but it's in a time where it would have been weird to have met online. And it's just, it's so funny and heartwarming. She owns a little bookshop. He owns a big bookshop and it's like the battles between them, um, online and then offline. It's so, so good. So go and have a watch of that if you need something happy. The last thing that I think you should watch if you need something happy is The Office. Even if you've watched The Office, just go ahead and do a whole redo. I think there's like 10, 10 seasons. I binge watched this with Barry 
over the Christmas holidays, like even on Christmas Day, we were watching it. It is the funniest show I've ever watched. It's the best. It all takes place in an office and all of the quirky characters, and I feel like everyone can relate to it if you work in an office. There's always quirky characters that you work with. This is just like on a whole other level, and it's going to make you smile. So if you need a little bit of happy to combat the stress, those are my suggestions. My second coping mechanism is to just escape. Like this world no longer exists, and you're moving to a fantasy world that is not here. That is a good way <laughs> to get out of some anxiety. So the first book that I have to recommend to you is The Martian by a um, Andy Weir. This is actually quite funny as well. It's about a man who is an astronaut and he gets left behind on Mars. All of his crewmates think he's dead. He's not dead and he has to somehow survive on Mars until they can he can reach out to them until they can get there. Will he survive? Won't he? Who knows? Um, well, I know how it ends. Um, but he is hilarious. This is chock full of um, bad words. Swear words are right in here throughout the whole thing. Mark uh, has a bit of a potty mouth. So if that's something you don't like, don't read this. But I like it. <laughs> and I thought it was hilarious and like gripping and I couldn't put this down. Also, there's a movie for this. There's also a movie for this. I tried to kind of pick a few things that also have movie versions in case you need a little um, film after reading it. Now for the movie, I think that you should watch BFG. This is a very happy-go-lucky um, book and movie. I loved the movie. I bought this for Barry a couple of Christmases ago. We watched it on Christmas Day a couple of Christmases ago and it was so magical. This is about a little girl who lives in an orphanage, I believe, and um, a giant comes and visits her and she befriends the giant. There's a trip to see the queen. It is just so magical and I loved every second of watching that movie. For TV series, I recommend that you watch um, His Dark Materials. This is also a book series, so you can go ahead and, and watch and read if you want to. This follows Lyra, who lives in Oxford, um, and it's a kind of alternate world where people and everyone has these animals. They're called daemons, and they're basically your soul living outside of yourself, and daemons for children change form. So they're a rat one second, they're a cat the next, depending on your emotions and the situation. And then they do solidify after you go through uh, puberty. And it is about her adventure because someone is kidnapping the children in Oxford and she is trying to get to the bottom of what's happening to these children. It's absolutely wonderful. So, so good. So coping mechanism number three is straight from Leanne, and this is ugly cry for a different reason. Yes, sometimes, um, y you know, you need to look at somebody else's problems, honestly, and, and just feel for them so, so much, um, and just get out of your own problems. Um, so for the book for this, I would highly recommend Lily and the Octopus. Yes, I you will ugly cry. I ugly cried throughout the entire book. I brought this on a plane. I was going to Toronto one day for work, brought this on the plane, ugly cried on the plane. I finished it at home, ugly crying on the front porch. It's so good. This is about Ted. He's a gay man who is um, still mourning the loss of his last relationship. Um, he has a little dog. She's a Dachshund named Lily. And she is so loved by him. One day he sees a formation on her head that looks like an octopus, but you and I know it's cancer. It's brain cancer. And he's trying to love on and save his dog. And um, in this book, the dog kind of talks back to him and all in like exclamation marks. I love the punctuation and the use of punctuation in this book. It is so heartwarming and heartbreaking 
because of him trying to do everything he can to save Lily and just the love between them will make you ugly cry. So for the movie version of this, um, I would suggest Little Women. The latest Little Women is wonderful. I don't know if that's out yet, I don't think so. But I'm talking about the 90s version where Winona Ryder is Joe. She's fantastic. That movie was such a staple, like I'm serious. When I would be getting PMS, I'd be like, I gotta watch Little Women just so that I could get it all out. Just get it out. Uh, also, it's a book. Read the book first if you want to, or reread it. Um, so Little Women all the way. And then if you want a TV show that will make you cry, This Is Us. I mean, you can't help but cry. I haven't finished that. I think I've only watched the first two seasons and I need to move on. I really do. So those are my suggestions for all of you out there that need a good old ugly cry for a different reason right now. Um, the fourth coping mechanism is also straight from Leanne and it is to give your brain something else to obsess over essentially thrillers and mysteries. Um, I'm sure none of you are going to be surprised about the book version that I'm going to suggest here. It is Blue Monday. This is a mystery series. I uh, need to pick up Thursday's Children, so I'm right in the middle of it. Um, in Blue Monday, we follow a psychoanalyst, a psychotherapist, excuse me, called Frida Klein. She is a, such an interesting character. She's a puzzle in and of herself. In any case, um, she has a patient who comes in and is really struggling with infertility with his wife and he keeps dreaming of this red-haired boy. He's red-headed. He keeps dreaming of this boy that he wants and then like two days later a boy fitting almost the identical description goes missing. And Frida goes, that makes me feel uncomfortable. She gets involved in the police case and the rest is history. It is also an incredibly cozy book. You wouldn't think mystery could be cozy, although there's cozy mysteries. This is truly a mystery, like some gritty stuff in here. But um, it is cozy. I just adore this series. And so here's a whole series for you. Enjoy. And you're welcome. So for movies, I would recommend Hush. I think this is on Netflix and it follows a woman who is deaf and there is a killer who is killing off all sorts of people on this little lake. I think it's this, is it a lake? I, I feel like she's at a cottage or something. In any case, the the neighbors don't live really like right stacked up against each other. It's not the suburbs. Um, so she is combating this guy. She uh, eventually recognizes that there is a killer and it's like a battle of the wits. And I just thought it was a really smart movie. I really loved it. Um, so I would recommend Hush for a TV show. If you haven't watched Luther yet, <laughs> First of all, Idris Elba is gorgeous and British. He has an accent and he's gorgeous. What? In this TV show, we follow Luther, who is a detective and he gets all of these very strange murder cases and it, it, they're just, they're twisty turny and some of them well, one of them in particular made me feel so uncomfortable that I was like kind of dreaming of it later. Anyway, it's really, really good. If you haven't watched Luther, Luther yet, I so recommend. So I added a couple of other coping mechanisms that I do during anxiety filled times like these. Um, so the next is just something, surrounding myself with things that will restore my faith in humanity. You know, lots of people are like taking all the toilet paper right now and buying up all of the cold medication, all of the pain medication, and just just kind of being jerks. And um, there's lots of news about that right now. And so, um, you know, when you're feeling like there's more jer jerks in the world than not, you need a little faith restored um, in humanity. So my suggestion to you is to read Mr. Pip by Lloyd-Jones. This is about 
a um, a tropical island where there's this civil war going on, this major war is going on, and all of the white people have left because they can and they're rich, and all of these um, black people are left behind. One white man stays, and his name is Mr. Watts, and he decides to stay so that he can teach the children. He is not a teacher. He has no idea what he's doing. And so what he does is sit them down and he reads great expectations to them. This has um, really restored my faith in humanity because Mr. Watts loves these kids so much and they love him right back in return. And it just, I, I loved how far he would go um, for these kids and you know, really putting himself last in a situation where he could easily have put himself first. So I would highly recommend Mr. Pip for a movie. This is an old one, kind of. It's Jerry Maguire. I used to love this movie and watched it all the time. Um, Jerry Maguire is um, a sports agent. I am not a sports person, so I don't know the exact term. Um, he's a sports agent. He has a bunch of athletes underneath him that he like negotiates their contracts and that kind of thing. And he works for a company and this is what they do. And one night he has this like epiphany where he's like, what if it wasn't so much about the money and it was more about what we could do for these people and these athletes. And he writes a memo, which is a long memo. <laughs> and he sends it to everyone and he feels really good about it and he's promptly fired and he loses all of his um all of his clients and it's about one of the clients that stays with him and their relationship and i just i loved the story of a man who would stick by his um beliefs and and I just thought that was just a lovely, lovely movie. And then for TV shows, I would recommend Friday Night Lights. This is so just ingrained and filled with morality moments. This is about a coach, a football coach, and he's a high school football coach in Texas, I should say. It's about him and his family and the kids that he coaches and their relationship with one another and it's specifically him that I just I just love and I feel like he's such a such a person to look up to and I just adored that series as well. Okay so the last coping mechanism is another like get out of this world um coping mechanism but not in a fantasy or sci-fi world like go back in time go way back in time to the, the problems that they had then, which are different than the problems that we have now most of the time. Um, so uh, I am reading this right now um, and I wanted to recommend The Lost Orphan by Stacey Halls to you. This is about a woman who has to give up her daughter Clara because she cannot afford to keep her. It's very sad. Um, and she goes back I think six years later, she saved up enough money to go back and get her child. And someone using her name has already claimed her. Uh, so we follow her. We also follow a woman living in a townhouse who is wealthy, um, the child that she has. And um, she is deciding to bring someone else into the home. She's a bit of a I don't know, she's uh, kind of a shut-in. She can't leave the house. She really struggles with it. She leaves to go to church and that's about it. And bringing someone into the house is a huge decision for her. And it's just so good. I'm loving it. So it's coming out on April 7th. Um, I don't know how long this coronavirus thing is gonna go down, but if you're, if we're all still kind of shut away, um, definitely order this. You could pre-order that now. Um, for, for a movie, I would recommend The Young Victoria. It's a bit of a romance story about Queen Victoria and her German um, love interest, well, her German husband. I, I really loved this. It's about Victoria going out on her own. Her mother and her mother's husband or boyfriend were very controlling of her life. Um, and it's about her like breaking away and doing her own thing. 
I really loved that movie a lot. And then for TV, a TV show that I am planning on re-watching is Mad Men. This is not so far ago. It takes place in the 60s and we follow an ad agency and the, the main character is um, kind of running away from his past. He's, he's so brilliant in this ad agency, but we also follow a whole cast of characters. What I find most interesting, I would say, is the women in this series and them trying to climb up the ladder and just the way that they're treated. It's just a whole different world. People would be drinking and smoking at work. Like, what? It's very strange, but also so good. And like, I, I found it addictive. So I'm gonna rewatch it because why not? Okay, so, those are all of my coping mechanisms and and things, books and TV shows and movies that I would totally recommend to you. If any of these coping mechanisms are things that you use during stressful times, stay safe, stay healthy, stay positive, love each other. Um, and thank you so much to Leanne for doing this video. I definitely wanted to do my own version. I don't know if she would mind, but I would think that it would be a great thing for other booktubers to do. So if you're out there and you kind of feel like doing this, I just think that more positivity being spread right now, the better. And if you do some, something like this, please, please, please tag Leanne because she is everything. She's fabulous. So I hope you guys are doing well. Take care of yourselves and I will chat with you very soon. Bye.